Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video in the C Sharp Best Practices video series. So this is part 8 and this part contains some new best practices which everyone should try to follow whenever they are programming in the C Sharp language. If you want to watch the previous parts then you can do that by following the links which are given in the description of this video. So without any further delay, let's move on to the first best practice that this video has to offer. The first one is use Pascal casing for naming classes, methods and properties. So Pascal casing is when we write the first letter of a word or a name in capital case. This is different than camel casing in which the first letter is always in the small case and then the subsequent words have their first letter in capital case. It is always beneficial to use Pascal casing to name classes, methods and properties because it is a universally accepted coding standard. The very simple reason to use Pascal casing is that if you are working in a team, then it will be familiar for everyone when they will see the standard practice being followed. If you are, however, a solo developer and are comfortable in some other naming convention, then by all means use that. But I would highly advise you to stick to the common standards which are followed by everyone. So in this example, the class name and this property name and also this method name is written in Pascal casing. And for example, if you want to create another property which consists of two names or two words, then the way to write this in Pascal casing is to capitalize the first letter of every word. For example, this F and N is capitalized over here. And this is how you write the names in Pascal casing. Moving on to the second best practice of this video, avoid using write only properties and use a method instead of writing the kind of properties which can only be written to and will not return anything. So using public fields So there is really no point in using write only properties because properties are meant to be a shorthand when we want to get and set values and the code logic is not very complicated. Also this is more or less an accepted practice that we should always use properties whenever they have to return something. If you need to set a value which will never be returned as it is, then use a method instead as it is easier to understand and it avoids any unnecessary confusion. So in this example, in the person class, there is a property name which is only writable and you cannot read any value from it. When this property's value will be set, then the value will be saved in this private field underscore name. Now instead of having this property which is only writable, we can have a method which will do the same thing but it is easier to understand by simply looking at it that this method is setting the value of this field. So I would highly recommend to not use a property which is only writable in nature and simply use a method instead because it is easier to understand for everyone and most of the time when working on big projects then there is a team involved and we should always try to write code which is not very complicated and can be easily understood by anyone across the team because when any issue arises then the first developer who is available will have to fix those issues and if the code is written in such a way that it is harder to understand it then more time will be consumed in fixing the bugs and issues which may arise in the production setting. The third and last best practice for this video is never have public fields and use properties instead. So over here in this example, there is a person class and then there are three fields which are public. As you can see, the constructor is accepting the values for the first name and last name. And then there is a method set full name, which is setting the value of this full name field. Now, ideally this full name should be a property and no one should be able to set its value because its value is dependent on the value of first name and last name. So if it is writable public field like this, then anyone can accidentally overwrite its value and then this field will contain an invalid value. The problem in using public fields instead of properties to return something 
is that the code which sets the field value is not adjacent to the field and it is somewhere else. This means that when we have to change the setter logic, then we will have a hard time looking for it in a large code file. A property has its getter and setter logic next to its declaration, so it is much easier and convenient to make code changes or to quickly fix any bugs or issues. In this example, it is not the proper way to return the full name by creating a public field. Instead, what we can do is we can create a public property and then we can only provide the get logic for this property and we can simply return this value which is being used to set the full name and then we can comment out this one and then this value will be returned whenever this property's value will be accessed and we can also comment out this line to remove any errors and there you go this is the proper way to return the value of full name instead of using a writable public field so that was it for this video guys do let me know what you think about it and if you were able to understand its contents if you have any questions then feel free to use the comments area please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you always want to be the first one to receive the news about the new videos i will see you in the next one till then have a great day